Rebel Wilson is an Australian actress, producer, writer, and lawyer who lost 60 pounds in 2020, going from about 100 kilos or 220 pounds to 75 kilos or 165 pounds. Oh, you didn't know she had her law degree? Well, there were a lot of impressive things that I didn't know about Rebel until researching her weight loss journey. She declared 2020 her year of health on Instagram and recently opened up with an hour long video on Instagram detailing how she lost the weight. In her own words, she went from being fat Amy to fit Amy. And you bet in this episode, I'm gonna sprinkle in all sorts of funny Rebel clips. <laughs> I'm the best singer in Tasmania with teeth. Love it. What's your name? Fat Amy. Um, you call yourself Fat Amy? Yeah, so twig bitches like you don't do it behind my back. Now, while she plays lighthearted, funny characters, I've researched her quite a bit for this video, and I've learned that she has a lot of depth and has put a ton of work into her wellness journey. So if you've never taken her seriously, now is the time because she is crushing her weight loss and wellness goals. Here's a rundown of what I'm covering in this video. I'll start with a discussion about where her weight issues stem from in the first place. Then we're gonna talk about why she wanted to lose weight. What's her why? You know I'm big on that. And finally, we'll get to what she calls the rebel triangle of health. You'll discover what she had to change about her nutrition, how many calories she eats in a day, both for weight loss and now that she's moving into her weight maintenance phase, what her plan is for that what kinds of exercise she does and how frequently she does them, and how she's working to overcome her biggest battle of all, which is emotional eating. But real quick, if you haven't subscribed to this channel, go ahead and do that right now. Just click that little button below. Each week I post new information to help you lose weight and get healthy. Really, go do it. This is an important message and more people need to hear real weight loss journeys like this one. The more subscribers, the more people get to hear Rebel's story and be inspired to create one of their own. So let's start from the beginning of where Rebel's weight issues started. She's been overweight since she was 20 years old, so for about 20 years. In college, she started to gain weight rapidly and was diagnosed with polycystic ovarian syndrome or PCOS. The doctor prescribed her a pill but didn't really say much else. And now that she's healthier, she reported that she doesn't even need to take that pill for PCOS anymore. Rebel revealed that she was at her thinnest when she had malaria and almost died. She hasn't been the weight that she is now since high school. Here's a recent clip from Sky TV where Rebel shares just a little bit about where her issues with weight started. Rebel Wilson. Tell me back to the first time you had issues with your weight. I wasn't loving myself in the way that I should. I was pretty lucky. I only had like two sexual harassment experiences. Now that I'm pregnant, I'll be, <gasps> I'm not actually pregnant. I just said that. Rebel recently spoke with Drew Barrymore about her motivations to be healthier, but just didn't feel like she had the time. But thanks to COVID-19 restrictions, she knew she wasn't going to be working that much in 2020, so she'd have more time. And Rebel was also freezing her eggs and wanted good quality eggs in the bank. Rebel had an on-again, off-again relationship with weight loss until 2020. She'd do a diet or go real hard on the exercise for a while and then gain it back. But here's a really important takeaway for you. Rebel was determined to actually change her whole lifestyle. So it meant not only physically, but mentally as well. Losing weight is a big commitment and you have to get outside of your comfort zone on a regular basis. The mental and emotional side turned out to be the biggest challenge for her. We can all logically learn what to eat and how much exercise to do. But it was the emotional stuff about realizing why was she emotionally eating? Why was she overeating? And trying to solve that, that turned out to be the hardest part for her in losing 60 pounds. Another mental block she had to get over was that she was making a lot of money being bigger and it's part of her comedic persona. Hollywood loves to typecast people and let's face it, she was the fat funny girl. Now, this has been a journey for Rebel and took her a little over a year. She's not perfect about it, which is a good thing. I always like to say progress over perfection because perfection is not sustainable. 
She didn't have incredible discipline and wasn't overly restrictive or crazy intense with her workouts. She focused on balance and attacking health from all different areas. There's no right way to do things. There's no one person or book. You, you get to learn little bits and pieces along the way and then piecemeal together what works for you. In true celebrity fashion, she started by going to a luxurious Austrian medical detox and wellness center called Viva Meyer. Her mostly carb and sugar diet led to an overgrowth of candida in her gut. This was making her feel like she was starving all the time and for someone who already has a big sweet tooth trying to lose weight, she wanted to be sure that she was starting off with a clean gut and fresh mindset. After the detox, she started to feel a whole lot better but hadn't really put both feet into her journey yet. So she wrote a letter to herself about how she was gonna give it her all this year and approach her health transformation from all different angles. She made a strong internal commitment and externally committed on Instagram to all of her followers for more accountability. Now that you have a better understanding of why Rebel struggled with her weight, let's get into the nitty gritty of exactly what she did to deal with her emotional eating habits and change her lifestyle. Rebel admits that everyone has a vice. She doesn't have a problem with sex, drugs, alcohol, or gambling, but when it comes to emotional eating, especially sugary foods, that was her downfall. Can you relate to that? She has a huge sweet tooth, which by the way, doesn't go away completely after losing weight. She loved brownies and ice cream and would often suffer from emotional eating, whether that be from happiness, sadness, celebrating, or just feeling down. Emotional eating was the thing she did. It's about the diary again. What diary? Your diary proved very interesting to read. You read my, you read my journal? At first, I did not know that it was your diary. I thought it was a very sad handwritten book. As an actress, writer, and producer, her work can be an extremely stressful. And how she was dealing with the fame and pressure of work was by emotionally eating. But she shared some great tips for how she's dealt with her emotional eating I wanted to tell you next. She recommended an audiobook by Dr. Habib Sagihi. I hope I'm pronouncing that name right, called Within. It's a book about how your weight and physical health is related to what's going on mentally. She took the time and energy to listen and learn about herself. This is an overlooked area of weight loss. People so often want a quick fix and aren't willing to get uncomfortable, identify problem behaviors, and take consistent action to change them. One of the biggest issues in her life was that she would get into a negativity cycle because she'd try to exercise and work really hard, then she'd feel tired and just eat a couple of desserts, then she'd feel guilty and shameful for not sticking with her plan, and this vicious cycle continued for 20 years. This emotional eating cycle can be really hard to break, but it's definitely possible to get a handle on it, and Rebel is proof of that. She'd never worked on the emotional side of things before. She's done a lot of work on herself to identify the unhealthy patterns and behaviors and why she was doing them. That doesn't mean that these old thoughts and behaviors have completely gone away. When she gets stressed, she still emotionally eats sometimes. The old patterns still come up when she's worried or anxious, just not every day now and she has positive coping strategies to deal with her emotions in ways that don't involve food. Excuse me, but I might take a little more of my sugar tonight. I might take you home with me if I can. Again, emotional eating is not something that's gonna disappear. I think that we can all be emotional eaters at times. The people and triggers that drove her to emotional eating didn't go away. Her external circumstances, aside from COVID, didn't change, but her internal self and mindset did. She just has to manage it moving forward. Rebel had a special message for those viewing her Instagram video who were struggling with emotional eating. She said, if you have struggled with emotional eating and overeating, know that it doesn't mean you're a bad person or that you should feel bad about yourself or guilty or ashamed because everyone has vices. It's about how you manage it and replace your unhealthy habits with healthy ones. 
Rebel became tearful in her Instagram video when she spoke about emotional eating, and you could tell that she's really worked hard to process her experiences, thought patterns, and behavior, but admitted that she hasn't really fully processed everything yet. She said the reason she was doing these unhealthy behaviors is because she wasn't treating herself with the same love and respect that she treated everyone else in her life with. She left herself to last, and I'm sure many watching or listening can relate to that. She wasn't valuing herself. She was telling herself negative things like, and I quote, stuff it with a whole thing of ice cream or packet of brownies because you deserve that. She's trying to change those patterns so she's more loving and respectful to herself. She still wants the sweet treats, but she's working on self-love. And for her, self-love is a hard concept to master. One of my favorite parts of Rebel's video was how she spoke about the differences between self-confidence and self-worth. She didn't know if she inherited a low self-worth or if it had something to do with being a woman or just childhood experiences. Rebel confessed that her weight was a barrier, a protection in a way, because she was bigger and she'd often make jokes growing up about her weight. Are all the women in Australia as beautiful as you? Most of them are a bit skinnier. <laughs> Even though she's a confident, skilled, accomplished woman, she still struggles with self-worth. Self-worth and self-confidence are completely different. Just because she had a high level of self-confidence didn't mean she had a high level of self-worth. I know so many women and men deal with either low self-confidence, low self-worth, or both. She wasn't properly processing her emotions. And so whether it was from fame or being a movie star, all she was doing was eating to numb those emotions. Now getting serious about her weight loss meant that she had to get serious about her emotions. The best thing for her to do was process those emotions so that she didn't have to numb herself from anything. Emotions themselves aren't bad. They are a normal part of life. We just wanna properly process those emotions, not stuff them down with food. A few things that helped her here. So one that I really liked was she set a timer for 12 minutes and wrote out all of her emotions. And she vented, but she also tried to see things from the other person's perspective if she was in an argument. And then she ended the writing with some gratitude. And once the timer was off, she would burn the piece of paper or throw it away. She said, it doesn't matter how you destroy the evidence, it's up to you. But once that paper, piece of paper is gone, just forgive yourself and try to move on. And Rebel listened to a lot of podcasts about body image, body positivity, mental coping strategies for anxiety, stress, and depression along this weight loss journey. She also learned about mindful eating and why when you eat, that is all you should be doing, not watching TV and eating at the same time because it leads to mindless overeating. She really tries to slow down, take one bite at a time, and chew and enjoy her food. Lastly, she downloaded a couple of meditation apps and does those if she feels really stressed out. So emotional, that's one side of the rebel triangle of health. Now we have two more sides to cover. We have the physical side and the nutritional side. Why cardio? Yeah, no, don't put me down for cardio. Rebel admits that she's lucky in the sense that her wealth affords her access to some of the best personal trainers. One of them, Gunnar Peterson, also happens to be the LA Lakers strength and conditioning coach. I should have taken that cardio tip more seriously. So yeah, she had some great help in the fitness programming department, but she said the majority of her exercise has just been walking. She enjoyed having a personal trainer because she liked to chit chat and build rapport with them and they can be a really great source for motivation and accountability. A tip Rebel used to make physical activity more enjoyable that I really liked and I give to my own members was listening to a podcast or motivational book at the same time. If you follow my work, you know I love the book Atomic Habits by James Clear. One of the rules of habit change is to make the new habit more enjoyable. She has a gym playlist, a musical theater playlist with her favorite musical songs, and a hardcore playlist of songs to get her going up the big hills on her hikes. 
Now she never thought that she would like hiking, but she actually loves it. She loves being in nature. She tries to vary her exercise to get the different benefits of cardiovascular and strength training. And Rebel encouraged women to not be afraid of doing strength training with weights. It makes her feel strong and powerful, and the weights are good for your muscles and bones too. There are all types of physical activity. So if you have bad joints, bad knees, ankles, a back, I want you to try swimming. And in my opinion, there's a form of physical activity for everyone. It's just a matter of being committed enough to get it done. What are you doing? I'm doing horizontal running. Rebel said she's active for about an hour a day, six to seven days a week, even if it's just taking a leisurely walk. She usually takes Sundays as a rest day. Now I wanna take a pause here and highlight her consistency. Move your body a little bit every day. It does add up. The more you do it, the better you're gonna feel. So make time for exercise or just movement. And I promise that you're gonna have more energy and be more productive. Now let's cover the last part of the Rebel Triangle of Health and that's nutrition. Rebel explained that she has a little bit of an uphill battle with nutrition because of her PCOS and genetics. She got her genes tested and said she has the gaining weight gene. And genetics do play a part in your weight and health. Research is still working out to find you know, what percentage is environment versus genetics. But here's the takeaway point for you. Rebel was able to lose 60 pounds in a little over a year despite having the gaining weight gene and PCOS. And she did it without crazy dieting or really intense exercise. Now, if she can do it, you can do it too. She understood nutrition was a big deal and actually said one of my personal favorite quotes in her Instagram video, you can't out train a bad diet. Now, personally, I like the spin from Dr. Gabrielle Lyon. You can't out exercise a bad diet and you can't out diet no training. Rebel thought that because she was exercising a lot, she'd be able to eat 3,000 to 4,000 calories a day, but it didn't work like that. She had to really look at what she was eating. She grew up eating fast food several times a week. We're talking Pizza Hut, McDonald's, and she said she loves In-N-Out Burger. We don't really do drive-bys, we just do drive throughs uh. <laughs> But she was eating processed food way too often. She told a funny story about how she used to think glucose or sugar made the neurons in your brain fire faster. So when she was in law school studying for exams, she'd always have candy like jelly beans on hand because she thought it was making her smarter. So here's a key point in her story I don't want you to miss. She said she didn't have great nutritional influences growing up. Her family went out to eat a lot, but she knew she had to take responsibility for herself. The little girl in her still wants the snacks and the candy, but she knows she can't have it, at least not all the time. Rebel does have a real sweet tooth. She only used to eat carbs and sugar is what she said. So when she started this weight loss journey, she switched to a high protein diet. She doesn't eat healthy and clean every day, but she is prioritizing protein where she can. Switching to a high protein diet was a little challenging because prior to 2020, she was mostly vegetarian and didn't eat much meat, but her body responds really well to a high protein diet and I can second that most bodies do. And so she's eating a lot of chicken, salmon, and vegan protein shakes. Rebel admitted that she used to eat a whole thing of Ben and Jerry's ice cream or a whole pizza when she was emotionally eating. She'd feel guilty, but the guilt didn't make it any better. It made it worse. How she hand handled the guilt was just to forgive herself and release herself from any feelings of guilt or shame because beating yourself up over it isn't gonna do you any favors. You should never ever feel guilty about eating healthy, well-balanced meals because your body needs fuel. We never want guilt to be associated with food. And I second Rebel when she says that no food is forbidden. I personally follow that same philosophy. I eat anything that I want. I just do try to prioritize protein. She still eats rice, potatoes, and fruit, and so do I. She doesn't get bored with meals because she's not on a super strict diet. She's eating a variety of stuff, but just concentrating on the protein. During her weight loss, she has tried to stay under 1,500 calories a day, but now that she's hit her goal weight, she'll be increasing that to 2,000 to 2,500 during maintenance because she's working out regularly. As a side note, 1,500 calories a day for someone who is losing weight is so much more doable than the 1,200 calorie a day number, which I hear thrown, thrown around a lot by clients who have previously tried to lose weight 
with caloric restriction. It's just not enough food for most people. You really do need to fuel your body properly, which she did, in order to sustainably lose weight. Otherwise, you're not gonna be able to maintain such a restrictive lifestyle. You're gonna get hungry and your hormones will win by regaining the weight. Rebel was a little bit worried about addiction transfer or going from one extreme of emotional eating to the other of obsessing over calories. She doesn't want to obsess over what she's eating or a number on the scale. And she told a story about when she came to Hollywood, there was a girl who'd lost some weight and weighed every gram of food, and she really did not want to do that. During her weight loss, she weighed herself once every other week. And now that she's in maintenance, she's planning on weighing herself once a month just to be sure that she's not going too far in one direction or the other. Rebel does strive for healthy balance with her nutrition, and I love that she said this. She's drinking two to three liters of water a day. Hydration is so important. Like most people who've lost weight, she found several pounds came off easily, but then she had to consistently work at it to get the rest of it off. And the more weight she lost, the harder she had to work for it. Eventually, she returned to the detox center in Austria to get the last few pounds off and reach her goal weight a month early. When she started her weight loss transformation, she was at 100 kilos or about 220 pounds, and she wanted to get under 75 kilos or 165 pounds and she reached that goal. While she admits it's really cool being successful in doing that, the number on the scale is not the end all be all. She just wanted something tangible to measure for progress. She lost the weight so that she could be a healthier and happier person. She likes being curvy and her goal was to never be skinny. She feels confident in any size. Again, she put a goal weight on there just kind of as a North Star, but she also used body measurements, which I think the one thing that defines you. It's your personality, your skills, and your abilities. There were a lot of people in her life who actually didn't want her to change, and she, she thought maybe they didn't want me to be happier. In the industry, there were a lot of people that wanted her to stay Fat Amy. And at the end of the day, it's her life and it's her body. Sometimes when you're changing for the better, people may not be happy, and they might try to sabotage you. But you have to stay true to yourself and stay focused. Hollywood wanted to typecast her, but she came to the wise conclusion that her health was more important. Her career is very demanding and she has to be healthy to sing and dance and act and travel. proud of herself for losing the weight and establishing a lot more balance in her life. For Rebel, it's about being a healthier version of herself. And she had some great advice from her Instagram video that I wanted to share with you to wrap this up. Her advice was that every body type is different, but just try to be a healthier version of you. In a global pandemic, health is one of the most important things because if you're healthy and have a strong immune system, you're less likely to be susceptible to serious complications of COVID-19. There's a reason why billionaires and CEO believe health is wealth because if they don't have their health, they don't have anything. Never feel bad about yourself, but if you're engaging in things you think are unhealthy, try to make some positive changes in your life. Beauty can be at any size. Even though some of you are pretty thin, I think that you all have fat hearts. Her ultimate goal is to have a healthy, balanced life. And at least from what I can tell from her Instagram, I think she's crushing it. I hope that her story has been an inspiration and balance, consistency, accountability, and personal responsibility to you. And Rebel, if you ever watch this video or listen to the podcast version, thanks so much for all your crude, dry humor and making us laugh. And thanks for setting a positive example. Keep up the amazing work. I'm on the edge, the edge, the edge, the edge.